Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is one of my favorite areas of New York. It's got a genuine creative vibe and an all around great aesthetic to it. So I've been in New York the past couple of weeks and I've been making all sorts of vlogs around travel photography and other things. You can check those out on the channel below and subscribe to see more. But today we're doing something slightly different. So I'm working with Adobe and I'm gonna be showcasing the new Premiere Rush CC app. So let's go a little bit meta now and skip back or rather forward to London and I'll show you how I edited this because this whole opening sequence has been edited entirely using Premiere Rush CC. So what is Premiere Rush CC? Now it is multi-device uh, software for editing video across both iOS, Android, Mac, and PCs. Now there are applications on each of those platforms to edit videos. This to me is one of the first that I've experienced where I can actually genuinely connect multiple devices together and work between them all together. Now the name Rush actually comes from the film industry as a term used for collecting all of your daily footage. So I actually see Premiere Rush as kind of an accessory to the full Premiere Pro. I'm looking to use this as a way to perhaps work on my rough cuts or my first drafts of videos. So I am really looking at using this just on the iPad. That's kind of my key focus for it before I go onto another platform to finesse things. So when I was at Adobe Max a few weeks ago in October, I was able to speak with the lead designer of Premiere Rush um, and there's definitely a lot more coming with it. So now let's jump into Premiere Rush CC and I'll show you how I edited that opening sequence and how this is going to work into my workflow. So I like to use this in landscape mode. There's a couple of ways you could get your footage onto here. You could use a card reader that plugs into the bottom and offload straight from your camera's memory card. For me personally, because I'm a Creative Cloud subscriber and I've got Creative Cloud storage, I've just put it into there. Now I should point out that as a Creative Cloud subscriber, I get access to all of the software. If you're not a subscriber of Creative Cloud, the Premiere Rush does use its own subscription model. So it may not be for everyone, um, but for me, I can just use this endlessly, no problems at all. So we tap the plus at the bottom to create a new project and then go add media. Now it's a shame Apple's iCloud Drive isn't supported, but I think that comes under the fact that it's multi-platform. So they just wanna create something that works across all platforms. So Creative Cloud Storage is supported, so is Dropbox. So I go into my Creative Cloud and I've got some files already in here. So we go through and we have all of the footage um, listed from my GH5. So I'm gonna tap through here and you'll notice that as I'm tapping it on the very right hand side, we're getting numbers. So this is actually adding to the timeline in the order of which that I'm tapping them. So I'm gonna skip out a few and then I'm gonna tap in here for the project name. So we'll call this one Rush. CC test, okay. And then if I tap sync with Creative Cloud, what that's now gonna do is gonna collate all of my sort of project files and synchronize them across the cloud to all my multiple platforms. So I'll tap sync with Creative Cloud, tap create. That's now gonna prepare the media and create a sequence for me. And now we're right into the application to start editing. And similar to all video editors, we have a very familiar looking sort of timeline and preview window. Um, and it looks very clean and you know reminiscent of other Adobe applications. So I feel right at home here. And I should bear in mind that this is 4K footage from my GH5. So I've got all my footage in here that I've added to my timeline. And if we see along this left-hand side, we've got a few tools and options here. And along the right-hand side, we've got options to things like titles, color, and other stuff. So I'm gonna run through these individually. First and foremost, now that I've actually got my timeline, I'm gonna add some extra footage. So I'm just gonna show you how that looks. So if we tap the plus, in the top left and we can go back to our creative cloud cycle through to the projects okay so i'm just going to tap in here to add in some extra footage i've just got plenty of b-roll here so i generally actually film everything kind of in chronological order so i usually have some sort of mental headspace in how i'm going to film things and the different angles and try and work with those occasionally i do swap things around but this is actually a huge benefit to me that i can just tap things in order and add them. So now that I've selected all of these different files, I'm just gonna tap add. That's gonna prepare it again and add those to the timeline. All right, so we've got all our footage here in the timeline. So I'm just gonna run you through how it looks and we can zoom in and out just by pinching and zooming on the actual timeline itself. And you'll see that it's already quite familiar to existing video editors. So we have our timeline running along the bottom, 
our preview window and our controls in the center. I can even drag to expand these using the little icon towards the lower right. So I like to have a preview window fairly large. And if we see in the bottom left corner where we've got all our icons over here and, and tools, we can expand out the video and audio if we wanna see more of those waveforms. Um, or if we tap this icon below that, you'll see that we come into a timeline view of multi-track, which is very similar to what we see on Premiere Pro. With these clips here, I can just drag and drop to rearrange them. So I can just do that and you'll see that the timeline just kind of like snaps together and keeps everything magnetic. So I'm just gonna piece together the sort of order of everything first um, and then I will trim it down afterwards. So we've got this train sequence. It wouldn't be a video of mine if it didn't start with a train. Then we've got some coffee clips and then we've got some locations, uh, sort of shots of street art and everything around Williamsburg in Brooklyn. I actually just want to show a little bit more of like a, a scenery aspect before we go straight into the coffee making. So I've got this clip here. Let me just zoom in. And it's of the sort of iconic street signs of New York. I'm just going to tap and hold that and drag that all the way back to the front of my timeline and place that after the train. All right, so let's now start trimming it. I'm actually gonna hide away the multi-track editor and start to trim things like this. So to trim clips, you just tap onto the clip itself and then tap and hold on the left side and you can start to drag it and scrub through to the position of where you want to trim. So I actually want my clip to start with the doors closing from the outside. Let's just grab pretty much from the start itself. So the doors close and then I'm gonna make a cut. So we've got the scissor icon on the left, so we make a cut, and then I'm gonna bring in this clip of the doors from the inside. So the doors close, then we've got movement of the train. I wanna get it from position of where it's actually moving quite fast, and then we will cut back to the outside of the train where I've got this clip here, uh, just as the people walking past and the train going past. And let's just play. like that. I'm pretty happy with this. And I can just stop the playhead and drag and that will snap to the playhead. Let me come to this next scene. My position, the camera sort of falls away after that. So the point of which I'm happy with is about there. I can either again just drag the end of the clip to trim it or I can press the scissor icon. I can make a trim and then I can delete the selected clip afterwards. Uh, so I generally flip between the two options depending on where the playhead is and how I'm actually kind of editing it and I'll go through and position this. So we're quickly building up a timeline of things together and you'll see that in some instances I'm using the same clip but only small sections of that clip and I'm just trimming it or deleting it um, or making cuts and sort of like rearranging aspects of it. So from this point on I think it would be a good stage to add some music. So if we go into the plus again and we can add more media so we tap into media and I'm brought back to where I left off with my video. And if we go into audio, so I've got this track here. Um, this is from Chill Hop. You could also link this with say your Apple Music. Just make sure you do have the right permissions to use the tracks in there. Um, so if you had existing music that maybe you've made or someone's made in your library, um, you can do that. And you'll see that it's now added my audio layer to the very bottom. Um, so we've got this in here. And if we just play it, that music's gonna start going. So I actually know that this audio um, has a kind of a slow intro to it. And you'll see that if I zoom in on here and expand that down, I can actually see the waveform and I can literally see the point of which the beat breaks. So it's right there. And I'm just gonna make a cut. So I'm gonna delete that first bit of audio, drag it all the way back to the beginning. Let's play. There we go. So now we've got the music playing. But you can see we've still got the audio kind of interrupting and interfering with the music, and we don't really want that. So let's tap into these clips here, and let's expand down the audio. Go over to the right side, and we've got audio control, so I'm just going to drop the clip volume down. Um, and you can see the waveform has just dropped significantly in the view, so we drop it down. We could also um, mark these clips as particular uh, types of audio, but it's already correctly analyzed those as just being other types of audio because it's not voice and it's not music. If we tap onto the music, we can make sure that that's recognized as music and uh, the volume's all fine there. That's all good. So let's just play that. So now the clips are much more prominent and the music just kind of like stands there. It doesn't get in the way of anything. So now it's a case of just trimming stuff to the beat. 
And again, I've just got my waveform so I can see how this looks. So I can just see there's a beat right there. I'm just gonna trip, trim that down. Uh, it's a case of just playing and pausing, and this is exactly the same way that I would do stuff in Premiere Pro as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the rest of this timeline of trimming to the beat just as you've just seen, um, dipping the audio from those right until we get to the moment of where I wanna start speaking um, within the timeline. So I've got everything here um, and it's all in place and we've got some sections at the end of me talking. So if we just play that back, let's have a listen to how that sounds. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Williamsburg. So immediately you can see that there's me talking but the music is still playing underneath. Um, and it's, you know, a little bit distracting, a little bit too much. So we can actually fix this. So let's just close up these tracks and if we select the clip of me talking, tap into the audio, we can see that it's recognized me as voice. And if we tap onto the music, but if we select auto duck, what this is gonna do is it's gonna automatically drop the audio levels down um, for any moment of when someone's talking. So in other case, any clip where voice is recognized. And if we just expand that audio, you can see quite clearly, it's visually showing us where the audio is dipping. So if we now play this. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Williamsburg. You can see immediately that is much better. The audio is now dropped and you can hear me clearly. But I'm gonna go one step further and I'm gonna introduce a J-cut to this. So a J-cut is seen kind of all over the industry really. I use them a lot in my existing videos. It's a way to subtly bring the audio into the next transition of the clip before the video. So it's like a, a subtle sort of cut transition. Um, it's nothing special or fancy, but it's really noticeable as a soft way of introducing the next scene. So the way that we do that is we take our existing clip, the one that we're moving into, and let's just zoom in a section. And I'm gonna trim off the beginning sort of half a second to a second or so. And then I'm gonna go to the previous clip and I'm gonna expand out the audio in the video. And I'm gonna just drag the audio back by about a second or half a second. Select the later clip and then drag the audio in. And you'll see it's now created this capital J view. And if we start playing. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is one of my favorite. You can see how the audio comes in before the picture. It's just a nice soft way of introducing the next scene. So my sequence is all ready now, and I'm just now gonna go and do the color correction. And this is one area of Premiere Rush that I really like because it's really sort of familiar to Premiere Pro in the Lumetri panel. And if we just tap the color icon, we can go through and we can choose some existing presets in here. So you can just tap through and see how some of them look. So I actually quite like this SL Fuji one. And then if we go into the edit, we can then do some familiar basic color adjustments. So I know that I need to drop the white balance, just change the temperature slightly, increase the exposure ever so slightly, just to brighten this one up, increase the highlights and drop the shadows and the contrast and stuff. So I can just quickly make some adjustments to my video color. And as you can see, I've got three clips here, all from the train sequence. So rather than repeating the same process, what's nice is if I tap these three dots, I can create a new preset. So I'm just gonna call this one train, tap save. When I go into the next one, I go back to my presets. I can easily apply that same train preset onto these other clips. And I could go through all of my clips and make some very quick color adjustments. Now in the future, it would be great to see some advancements to this. So hopefully some other features from Premiere Pro will make their way into Premiere Rush. So a final aspect of this video that you would like to add is probably gonna be something like titles. Now if we go into the title panel over here, uh, we can browse through some existing titles or we can look on Adobe Stock and find some, um, some other titles. Now I should point out that unfortunately, the titles that I've created uh, were made using Adobe After Effects and Premiere Rush doesn't have the After Effects engine, so I won't be able to use my titles um, using the template format. I could export them as alpha channels, or I could just use the built-in titles here. I'm hoping that comes in a future version. I'm really hoping because that is one thing that really would like help set this apart from other applications is being able to use my existing titles. However, I could create some title templates using Premiere Pro, and those would transition across because it uses the Premiere rendering engine. So let's just drag this title in like this. So this is an animated one, so we play that. I can tap into this title, tap edit, and I can change the font that we're using. So let's match it up with the font that I use on the rest of my videos. Uh, I could adjust the size of it to make it bigger, smaller, and I can then adjust the line color, white, and then let's also tap into here, 
change the title to Premier Rush CC. So I could tap in and I could position the title into a different position and play here. So that just demonstrates how the titles work. Um, but for me personally, in my workflow, I'm actually gonna take this into Premiere Pro and that way I can then add in my own titles. So this is my video finished um, to the style and look that I go for. Um, everything's kind of ready. So I'm just gonna show you now how you can export that and share it. So when you go into the share tab over here, now I have actually noticed that on desktop Premiere Rush, you can export in higher resolutions. I'm not sure why you can't do it in iPad, um, but you can do it in higher res on the desktop. Just wanted to point that out here. So I'm just gonna leave it on automatic and um, we can then just set it to export. So now this exported and rendered video is ready for me to share to YouTube and I can just add in a title to things. I can add in all the different categories um, that I would do to YouTube. I could literally then just tap publish. I'm not gonna do that because that means that this video is gonna go immediately onto my channel. But I just wanted to show you that that is possible. Likewise, you could also share this to Facebook, direct to your Instagram. So if you were creating Instagram stories or something like that, um, this would be a great way to sort of step up your game even further. So that is everything that I wanted to share with you today about Premiere Rush CC. Uh, now I should reiterate that this is just version one and I'm excited to see where it's gonna go further and how it's gonna develop. Um, there's a lot more potential within this app and the one thing that I just really love about it is how it synchronizes between my platforms and my existing workflow. So for example, if we take my phone, I can go straight in here and we can see the updated version and now I've got my timeline that's gonna go up to date and I can play it through on here. So if I did wanna make some extra tweaks when I'm out on the go with just my phone, I could make those amends, I could save those, those would then synchronize, I could then come home, go to my desktop, make some amends. Or if I wanted to take it even further and go into Premiere Pro, I can just open this straight up in Premiere Pro, choose my Rush projects and there it is for me to choose. So I love that sort of synchronization between the devices and I think that's where this is really sort of key and what it's made for. So I'm definitely seeing the iPad as a way to utilize the beginning aspects of editing a video because so often I never actually get around to starting the edit of my video because I'm perhaps out all day shooting, I come home late, I'm too tired, I need to dedicate like a solid few hours to actually edit. But if I could jump in and out every sort of half an hour or so and just do little tweaks and little adjustments or even just review my footage, that is a huge workflow benefit for me. So yeah, I am incredibly keen to see how this is gonna develop and progress further, especially using the iPad Pro because it is so small, so light, yet incredibly powerful. Um, and it's just great to have software that can work across multiple platforms. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you uh, look forward to seeing more videos on the channel. Make sure you do subscribe to catch those. I've got some more New York vlogs on the way um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot coming up. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone and I will catch you in the next one. See you later, bye bye.